Hey, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to episode five of this uh, new season of SageMaker Fridays. This is almost the last episode. We have one more to go. So still lots of good content to, to cover. My name is Julian. I'm a principal developer advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. And please meet my co-presenter. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Segolen, and I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. All right, Sego, thanks for joining us again. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we're, you're going to help us understand a few more uh, crazy concepts this week. Let me remind you before we start that we are live. Uh, we're in lockdown. We're not in the AWS <laughs> office, but uh, we're going to unlock machine learning at least, right? So we're live. You can ask all your questions. We have a friendly uh, moderators waiting for that. And uh, ask anything that you like uh, on about machine learning. Don't be shy. I keep saying there are no silly questions. This is um, this is about learning, so make sure you learn as much as possible. Okay, so uh, it's time to get started. So we've covered quite a few topics in previous episodes, and this week we're going to uh, focus on quite a wide and important topic for machine learning, and I mean natural language processing. Sego, tell us more. <laughs> Indeed, Julian. Uh, today we are going to talk about a very practical uh, NLP, so Natural Language Processing Task, uh, the Topic Modeling one. Uh -huh. uh, topic Modeling is used to organize a corpus of documents into topics, uh, which is a grouping based on a statistical distribution of words within the document themselves. Okay. Uh, the key idea here is to convert unstructured data into meaningful and useful data for later analysis, thanks to of course, advanced ML model. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are many practical use cases for uh, topic modeling, uh, such as um, document classification based on the topics uh, detected, uh, automatic content tagging using tag, uh, using tag map to a set of topics, uh, okay. document summarization, uh, mm -hmm. information retrieval using topics, uh, content recommendation based on topic similarities, and so on. Yeah, sounds like a, sounds like a use case that uh, you know everybody can uh, can relate to. Every company, every organization mm -hmm. has mountains of uh, text documents that they'd like to organize, right? So, I don't know, customer emails, internal documents, yeah. uh, news articles, uh, archives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's so much laying around, and. Um, and it's impossible to go through all of it and label it, right? So we'll see about that. Uh, exactly. So today, that's the topic we're, no pun intended, the topic we're going to cover. <laughs> uh, we're going to help you figure out how to group those documents. Exactly. And, you know, document and NLP, um, working on documents and on the huge amount of the, uh, documents available uh, in uh, everywhere is a very exciting topic. Mm -hmm. But it's also uh, quite a difficult, difficult one because of right. the complexity, of course, of the language in general, <laughs> French, mm -hmm. and due to um, uh, how to uh, process, um, how to process the processing the processing of the data is super important. So um, we are going to say um, how another uh, unsupervised uh, Amazon SageMaker building algorithm can help us uh, to get good results out of the box. Uh, indeed, uh, we are going to use a new one, the NTM, the Neural Topic Modeling Algorithm, uh, oh on God. top, yeah, <laughs> on top <laughs> of uh, the open source uh, million news headlines datasets, which, co which okay. come from the ABC uh, Australian uh, website, and okay. uh, we will see how to process text uh, data sets uh, using uh, open source uh, tools such as um, NLTK and uh, mm. GenSim, and okay. uh, of course, how to train, evaluate a topic modeling algorithm, and of course, how to deploy it. Wow, okay, so new algorithms uh, mm -hmm. with more crazy names, one million news headlines, interesting, open source libraries, okay. 
what's not to like. So I think we're going to dive quite deep today again. So you know what to do right now. You need to get some coffee or uh, caffeine or whatever you need in your system to stay awake for an hour or so and um, and learn a lot. OK, so uh, actually, uh, so let me show you the, the GitHub repo. It's um, uh, it's uh, here on my screen. You should see it. Uh, don't worry about the URL right now. It's um, it's going to be on the final slide, as always. This is actually one of the examples from my SageMaker book, which I've talked too much about already. <laughs> uh, but it's all in there. And there is actually um, an example using two algos. I'm um, showing you how to build topic modeling using NTM, which Sego mentioned, and another algo we're going to quickly mention called LDA. So it's it's also interesting to compare the the performance and, um, and the efficiency of those algos. OK, so all the code is in there. Don't worry about it. It's on the final slide, and uh, and we can um, uh, we can point you to this later on. Okay, so as usual, before we dive into this code, um, we need to understand the machine learning problem and how we're going to solve it. So, as we just explained, the problem we're trying to solve is finding related text documents inside a pretty large collection. OK, so here mm -hmm. we have a million documents. There are news headlines, so they're pretty short. Still, each headline can be seen as a document. And we want to use this unsupervised learning technique called topic modeling. OK, so Sego, can you explain and maybe give us an example of topic modeling in action? Sure. So um, the technical definition of uh, topic modeling is that uh, each topic is a distribution of words and each document is a mixture of topics across a set of documents, also mm -hmm. referred to as a corpus. So as an example, um, you've got a collection of documents that contain uh, contain frequent occurrence of words such as bike, car, mile or break. Mm -hmm. So, they are likely to share a topic on transportation. <laughs> that, Makes sense, oh, right? Yeah, you got that, yeah, right? yeah, Everybody? Okay. yeah. Are you following? Just, just making sure you're following. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, other, uh, in other words, uh, the topic transportation is kind of a distribution made by uh, bike, car, mad, etc. Mm, I'm okay. going to give you another example to be sure that everybody uh, is understanding. Um, you've got another collection of documents which share the words such as STSI, port, floppy, or CAI. Maybe they are likely uh, to discuss a topic about computer. So um, the, the process of topic modeling is to infer hidden variables such as word distribution for all topics and topics mix, uh, for all topics and topic mix, topic mixture distribution for each document by uh, observing the entire collection of documents okay i see so i, I think the um, the intuition is pretty simple right mm -hmm. so we have a collection of documents and mm -hmm. we we know or we assume that there's a hidden list of topics, right? Exactly. So exactly. we're going to work with news headlines. So you can start thinking about what those topics can be. OK. Mm -mm. And so a topic is just a group of words that uh, that are very meaningful that mm -hmm. uh, and that frequently appear together. And so the first step, like you said, is to identify what those topics are. So what groups of words statistically mm -hmm. appear? you know, frequently appear together. OK, so that's, I guess, the first thing the algo needs to do. And then, of course, once we have those topics and we, we know those words, we can uh, score, I guess, each document mm -hmm. against the list of topics. OK, so let's say we have 10 topics, so we get mm -hmm. a score or some some kind of indicator telling us, well, this document is mostly, you know, topic one, seven and six. And and this other one is other topics. Right. So I think that's the uh, that's what we're trying to do. Um, and the, the thing that always hits me is that it doesn't require any labeling. Right. It is. Yeah. So we can start right away. Um, whatever documents are laying around can be used mm -hmm. and, and can be used to train a model. Right. Exactly. So, 
before we dive into that a little more, I, I have a quick question. So mm -hmm. I, I remember that we have a, a high level service called Amazon Comprehend. And mm -hmm. uh, and it can do that, right? It can do topic modeling in a managed way. You put your documents in S3, Comprehend does its magic, and you get your topics and your scores, okay? And you know me, laziness is a virtue. Uh, I like very simple things, so I, I like Comprehend for that. Why should I even pay attention and to that NTM thing? What's the <laughs> what's the bonus of training with NTM? So of course uh, we've got uh, our uh, this uh, fully managed text analytics service called uh, Comprehend, uh, which gonna provide you a pre-configured pre uh, topic modeling API that is best suited for the most popular uh, NLP use case. Um, and honestly, mm -hmm. it is a suggested topic modeling choice for customer as it removes a lot of the most routine steps uh, associated with topic modeling, like uh, tokenization, training a model and adjusting parameters, uh, and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. We'll see later that in detail. But sometimes, you know, uh, you need a finer control of the training or you want to have a custom optimization or okay. even you deal with a particular writing style or domain. So this is a right. This is the reason why you uh, want to implement your own custom uh, topic modeling model and use, for instance, the NTM model on SageMaker. Okay, makes sense. So just more, you know, more control, more, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, more tuning and 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 tweaking up um, opportunities if we if we work there. Okay, but keep in mind, you know, Comprehend can do this as well, and it exactly. it could actually be a good baseline, right? It could exactly. actually be, be a good baseline. Okay, so I think we understand the problem. We have the intuition what, of what we're trying to achieve. So let's take a look at the data set. Okay, so um, you, you can see it on my screen right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's called the Million News Headlines data set. It's uh, basically uh, a million news headlines <laughs> from the Australian uh, ABC uh, media. Um, it's not the American one, it's the Australian ABC. And uh, you can you can get this data set in, in different places, but it, of course it's available on Kaggle. And it looks something like this. It's exactly what you would expect, right? So there's a date, uh, and we're not gonna use that date at all, actually. We're gonna drop mm -hmm. that column quickly. And then there's the headline, right? So it's uh, it's lowercase, it's, it's in English, and yeah, so we had a we have a million of those, right? And <laughs> about topics that I suppose you would find in uh, in uh, in a news media, uh, but we don't have a list of topics, right? That's the fun part of that uh, of that uh, episode is we don't know what we're going to get, right? It's like Forrest Gump, you know. Topic modeling is uh, is like a box of a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to find. So hopefully we find some good chocolate in there. Let's let's figure it out. Okay, so very simple data set. Um, nothing nothing to uh, to worry about here, but. You mentioned early on that NLP requires a lot of data preparation. So what would mm -hmm. we typically do? And of course, we look at the code later on, but uh, you know, at, at a high level, what do we need to do to, to use this data? Uh, so you need to uh, have, of course, a, a good format uh, for your data. Uh, so you need to convert, etc. But after, uh, and when you think about the language itself, uh, you're gonna uh, remove a lot of um, words which mm. does, don't bring um, any more information. Uh, you need really to clean. It's like it's not like the, the same cleaning than for time series, but uh, really when you work with real world text data, uh, you have a lot of um, processing to do before being able to use some uh, ML model. Okay, yeah, so and for example, we can see, I don't know, uh, those short words like to and uh, in, you know, uh, yeah. on, you know, they're, they're, there's no meaning here. Um, no. I'm sure someone will argue that there is. Uh, because <laughs> that's the name of the game when you process data. Don't don't throw that away. It is really important. But I would say, yeah. in, in general, of, you, in, in case of topic modeling, it doesn't bring any value to. Yeah, it doesn't really help me what this is about. No, but, yeah. uh, feel free to disagree. So yeah, we need to clean things up, and of course, we're going to use that NTM algo, and it's uh, one of those built-in algos in SageMaker, and we can see it on screen here. 
Mm -hmm. And just like any algorithm, it expects data in a certain format. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can uh, we can read all about this, and um, and there's the there's the technical format. But more importantly, we'll see that we need to convert the sentences into uh, a bag of word representation, mm -hmm. which is exactly. completely impossible to read for humans <laughs> but that's okay it's similar to you know word vectors and all those uh, abstract representations for natural language but it, it, i say it's okay because it's not meant to be read by humans it's meant to be fed into ml algos so um so you can look at this data set here but you know you can uh, you can kiss it goodbye because that's not what we're going <laughs> to work on with that, right <laughs> Okay, so the data set uh, processing will cover later on when we look at the code, but there's going to be some work there. Um, so let's talk about the algo now in, in a little more detail. So um, neural topic modeling. Um, all right, I, I had my coffee, so you can go and explain what that is. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep, to keep it simple, but uh, before <laughs> explain, explaining the uh, NTM algo, uh, let me describe in a few words the other well-known uh, topic modeling algorithm, the LDA. One, okay. what does it mean? Uh, Latin Dirichlet allocation, uh, mm -hmm. because it will really help us to better understand uh, the NTM one. Okay, so, two for the price uh, for the price exactly. of one. I like that. It's okay, Friday. Fine. Friday. <laughs> Friday. Friday <sale>. so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, the LDA uh, is a generative uh, probabilistic model and can be seen as a dimensionality reduction for text. Uh, in other words, as a multinomial PCA. Uh, principal component al analysis. Uh, the LDA uh, gonna discover topics uh, through posterior inference and learn a word, a word distribution per topic. The okay. uh, things with this kind of statistical um, probabilistic model is that it relies on uh, it relies on some uh, statistical assumption such mm -hmm. as a fixed and known number of topics, which might, uh, from time to time, lead to poor quality topics. Uh, indeed, okay. uh, topics. Uh, which mix uh, unrelated concepts, uh, co which mix unrelated concepts, reduce, of course, the end user confidence. And um, this is where uh, the NTM algorithm come into play and address uh, this potential pitfall. Okay, uh, so before we talk about NTM, uh, so yeah. just to make sure I have the intuition, you know, uh, because the, the reason why I'm focusing on intuition is because the, the, I can't follow the math, right? Or yeah. it, it <laughs> takes me so much effort to follow that. And, and, and I'm sure it's the same for a lot of viewers. So what you're saying about LDA is that LDA assumes a, a certain number of topics that match a certain f type of distribution. Right. Mm -mm, exactly. And and you can I, I actually looked it up on Wikipedia because I, I was I'm lazy but I'm curious, um, <laughs> which is a strange combination. And and it's actually assuming it's a beta distribution, right? And and that exactly. LDA uh, and that Dirichlet object is just a multi uh, variate multi dimension version of the beta distribution. So exactly. If it it's if you if you accept if you accept that your topics look like multiple beta distributions, then you're happy with LDA. Uh, and who am I to question this? Okay, no one. So I'll, I'll, I'll trust blindly the authors, which include uh, Andrew NG, by the way. So even, even less reason to question that. But I think there's something here that I don't quite like, right? Uh, assuming that, okay, I'm trying to fit those words into distributions that have a certain shape. And uh, mm -hmm. all right, that's, it works, but there's something here that I don't like. So uh, it's just me, ignore me. <laughs> what about NTM? How is, how is NTM different then? Why is NTM, you know, let, let's not say superior, but how, how does NTM uh, implement uh, topic modeling in a different way? So, um, as I said, um, with LDA, you've got some very strong uh, statistical assumption to make uh, before the algo works. And on the other side, um, the Amazon NTM, which is 
called uh, actually the coherence awareness NTM model uh, in the relative co uh, research paper. Yeah, that's, yeah, is, that's the paper. Is a neural variational inference model, which actually offer a more flexible framework um, to accommodate uh, more expressive template models. Again, with LDH, you've got a fixed number and a well-known number of topics. With, thanks to NTM, you're going to have a more flexible framework, thanks to the neural variational inference architecture. And um, what's happened uh, in, uh, with uh, the NTM is that these uh, variational autoencoder model incorporates incorporate uh, topic coherence objective into the training process. So this is really the, one of the most important di um, difference with the LDA. You are not anymore within a statistical framework, plus you have um, a, a topic coherence objective during your training process. But maybe... Okay. Uh, yeah, let's show, let's show this on the slide. But just to summarize the difference, uh, so LDA makes strong statistical assumptions and tries yeah. to discover um, whatever word collections, whatever topics fit this assumption. Mm -hmm. um, NTM doesn't make that assumption. It's using yeah. pattern extraction and neural networks using encoder, decoder, etc. And to figure out what the topics are. So the end result is pretty similar. It's just, I would say the uh, the angle is uh, is is the difference. So let me show this on the on the slide. Oops, sorry. Stop sharing my screen. My mistake. <laughs> it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. Don't worry. <laughs> Clicked on the wrong thing. All right, here we are. Um, yeah, it's it's Friday after all. Come on. <laughs> okay, so here we are again. Sorry for this. Uh, so this is the network architecture um, uh, in the research paper, and um, and it looks a little bit complicated. Don't worry, we're not going to zoom in on on every on every detail here. So basically, it's it's an encoder decoder architecture. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sego, but on the left hand side here is the input layer. And this is mm -hmm. where we put the that bag of words representation. Okay, so don't worry about if you don't know what bag of words means, but it's just it's a, an abstract representation of the words in a, in a headline in this case. Okay, mm -hmm. and so then we fit that into an encoder, trying to which is of course uh, has a smaller dimension because it's mm -hmm. trying to uh, you know extract the the juice <laughs> out of the input <laughs> data, right? Uh, keep keep only the 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 meaningful, important mm -hmm. information, and then uh, it's decoding it again. Okay, so then it's trying to extract, to use that, you know, juice to rebuild the uh, the the input bag of words. Okay, so ideally here, you know, we would fit this representation for the headline, and we would get the exact same thing here. Okay, of course, it's not going to be exactly the same, right? Because mm -hmm. That's the purpose. We want to throw away, you know, the noise or the non-meaningful stuff, mm -hmm. um, and that's generally how encoder decoder architectures work. And unlike other, uh, unlike most uh, neural networks, where you know we do supervised learning and we do, you know, back propagation and we have labels and all that stuff, uh, and and then we read, you know, let's say probabilities on the output layer. Here we really don't care about the output layer, okay? Because mm -mm. the output layer is just a an encoded decoded representation of the input layer, okay? What we care about is this thing. Okay, which are exactly the internal parameters learned during training by the by the model, mm -hmm. and these are actually the topic weights, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say if we have ten topics, then we're going to be able to see, uh, you know, ten weights, which represent uh, how much of a topic is present in a document. Okay, so um, that's a non-mathematical explanation to, to to how the NTM works. But again, um, in this series, we want to focus on intuition and, and not on the math. You can, if you read the math, if you want the math, it's in the paper. I have to warn you, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty dense, right? It's pretty hard. 
Um, do, do you want to add anything here? Say, did I forget? Oh yeah, maybe uh, maybe explain the uh, uh, the metric. The you know how do we actually uh, uh, optimize for this? Um, so the NTM uh, give uh, is going to give you uh, two type uh, of uh, metrics. Uh, the first one, um, so when you've got this uh, architecture, uh, the idea mm -hmm. is to uh, really to uh, compute and to, uh, to 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 be sure that the, the topics are good and are significant. So you've right. got two type of metrics, um, two metrics that you can uh, check uh, with the NTM. The first one is a W. ETC, uh, meaning the mm -hmm. word embedding topic coherence, and the okay. other one is the TU, the topic uniqueness. Uh, so the WETC um, tell us uh, how semantically, semantically close the topic words are, and okay. this value is between uh, zero and one. And uh -huh. as it's some, most of the time always the case, the higher the better. And um, it's compute uh, using the cosine similarity of the corresponding word vector in a pre-trained uh, glove model, uh, which is another algorithm uh, similar right. to work to vec yeah, and after the uh, other metric, the TU, um, tell us uh, how, how, how unique uh, the topic is, uh, that is to say whether its words are found in other topic or not. Uh, again, the value yeah. is between a zero, zero and one, and the higher the score, the more unique the topic, the topic is. Again, the idea of this kind of metric, which are added uh, by, within the MTM framework, is to um, give you some good topics uh, to, for your for your use because uh, we're gonna see uh, finding topics in a document in some documents can be hard but you want to be sure that once you've got some topics uh, you want them to be useful uh, so this is the reason why it is very important to look at uh, these two metrics at the end of the training yeah so I think actually we'll see them in the training log and uh, I think they're uh, they're Again, very helpful in understanding mm -hmm. what is it we actually trained. Uh, LDA says, "Hey, I trained, you know, a model, and you've got ten topics, and uh, they're called topic one to ten, okay? <laughs> and then you have and kind of figure it out what you know, and and just score documents and see, you know, what documents score very high on topic one and what documents store score very high on topic two, and then you can." Kind of reverse engineer what those topics are, right? If you just mm -mm. maybe it's a lot of finance documents or a lot of uh, uh, sports documents, and and okay, so topic one is finance and topic two is sports, and okay, I think uh, NTM goes goes further than this, and uh, we'll see those two metrics, uh, WETC and TU, they really make it. I don't want to say obvious, but they make it much simpler to understand what mm -hmm. the topics are, and uh, and and. You know they're they're really really convenient. Um, we do we have hyperparameters, I guess, right? Um, so I would say number of topics is probably a hyperparameter. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you've got um, again. Uh, if you want to know more about the hyperparameter of the building algorithm, uh, check the documentation. It is very well known and very well yeah, explained. Yeah, we can see it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but, um, so SageMaker NTM supports uh, a list of uh, hyperparameters for, uh, again, fine tuning uh, model performance. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can use this hyperparameter, for instance, to configure knobs uh, like the number of topics to extract, the number of right. epochs, and the learning rate to fine tune the uh, trade off between uh, accuracy and training time. And here, in our case, uh, we are going to use uh, four types of uh, hyperparameters. The first, one, the first one is the number of topics, uh, the num topics, the number of topics to extract. Um, the second one is the uh, feature dim, uh, the feature dimension. Uh -huh. um, it should be set uh, to the vocabulary size optimizer. Uh, by default, uh, I think it is the ADA Delta, uh, ADA, ADA, ADA Delta one, so meaning the adaptive learning rate algo. Uh, but you can try uh, other. And uh, in our case, I think they are going to use uh, ADA. Uh -huh. After you've got uh, the mini batch size. Uh, yeah, it is usual the usual stuff. Urgent stuff. And after the, the other one, I think it's important is the number of uh, patients' epoch uh, oh, yeah. in order to 
control the early uh, stopping behavior. Uh, broadly speaking, the algorithm would stop training if uh, within the last uh, number of patients of EGPOC, there are not uh, been uh, improvement of validation loss. Okay. So the idea okay, is... Okay, yeah, it's yeah. always good practice. And it's a question I get a lot. How long should I train? And it's a very mm -hmm. simple answer because the answer is, I don't know. Just use <laughs> a huge number and set early stopping. And, uh, and if uh, your whatever metric you use stops improving over 10 or 20 epochs, then stop, right? Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's a machine learning mystery solved. Okay, uh, well, so we got a data set, we have an algorithm, I think we understand at least the intuition and the metrics it's gonna, mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna build for us. Uh, so now I think it's time to switch to the demo. So let me go to the notebook. And here we are. So I'm using SageMaker Studio again. Uh, if you've never tried Studio, it's our uh, um, machine learning IDE, web-based, just uh, uh, create a user in the uh, in the SageMaker console. It takes one minute, not even that. And, uh, and then you can open it and get to work, right? So this is what we're doing here. Okay, so as usual, we need some dependencies. Um, we quickly mentioned we would be doing some pre-processing. I'm gonna be using a couple of uh, uh, super nice open source libraries, NLTK, which is a, a, a favorite. <laughs> uh, and there are other ones like Spacey. I know, I know, let's not, uh, let's not discuss. <laughs> Spacey is very fast. Uh, but NLTK is very good too. I like both. And uh, we're going to use GenSim to build the vocabulary as well. So these are good uh, Swiss Army knives again for NLP processing. Okay. Uh, so we use pandas and we're going to open our data set, which we quickly looked at. There is 1 million lines in there. We're going mm -hmm. to ignore any error or any bad line in there. I don't think there, there are any, but just in case. And this is what the data set looks like. No surprise, right? We see uh, two columns, the published date, uh, which we're dropping, we're ignoring, and then the headlines, okay? Which are usually pretty short because that's what headlines are. And there's this uh, mm -hmm. headline style as well, um, um, which, uh, you know, which sometimes sounds a little confusing, especially when you're learning English. It's like, well, well there are missing words in there, right? There, where, where are the words? But that's the headline style, you know, very dense, very, uh, very compact. And they're short, right? So you can see this mm -hmm. one is uh, six words. This one is five words, etc. So I think it's, you know, maybe we're getting ourselves into something weird here because we're trying to uh, build topics on very short documents. Okay, mm -hmm. so if the name of the game is figure out, figuring out words, then uh, there aren't so many words. So you never know. We may have surprises, <laughs> but okay. We're up to the challenge. <laughs> okay, uh, so we have to process this. Um, so we're going to do a number of things. Um, so there's a, there's a, sh a short Python function here that we'll we will we'll apply to each headline. Um, it's uh, removing punctuation. It's mm -hmm. uh, removing digits, numbers. Uh, it's putting everything in lowercase, which I believe is use is is useless because I think everything is already lowercase. But anyway. And we're splitting uh, the all those headlines into into individual words, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're removing uh, stop words. So stop yes. words are all those short, useless words, right? Uh, and there's a built-in list in uh, there's a built-in list in NLTK. So you just say, okay, remove all those words, uh, and and they're gone, okay. And then finally, we use uh, a technical lemmatization, which is basically a way uh, which is similar to stemming, okay, uh, which you may be familiar with. And it's basically a technique to uh, to keep the the root, right, the the, yeah. the the concept inside the words. So, for example, if you have uh, the word I don't know uh, uh, swimming. You know, it's going to probably be lemmatized to swim, etc. So we're trying to to get rid of all those variations on on all those words because they really mean from a from a a, a, a conceptual perspective they mean the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what lemmatization is. And again, you have some built-in uh, tools in NLTK and um, and uh, you can do stemming as well. 
and and again if you want to use uh if you want to use uh, other libraries for this this is fine right so this is really it's very basic processing that i'm doing here but again it's a it's a bit of a simple example like but still this is probably what you would do right it's already mm -hmm. a very clean data set so uh um we don't need to drop uh, we don't need to check for i don't know bogus uh, html tags or, or 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 anything like that which are very typical in text data sets so there's certainly more you could do here okay all right, so we apply we apply it, okay. Uh, so we apply this uh, this uh, function to every headline. Uh, it takes forty four seconds, and and then we can visualize the data set again. So now we see we don't have sentences, we have uh, arrays, we have word arrays, right? And some of the some of those small words, short words are, are gone. And then we build the dictionary, right? You, you said that was an important parameter because it's a, it's a number of dimensions to the problems. Uh, what's mm -hmm. the size of the vocabulary? So we build that. And well, we realize there's so, almost 75,000 words. So at this point, uh, ignoring what's what's coming next, you know, what, what would be your reaction, right? Is this, is this, large is this too small is this what should we do here on those seventy-five thousand words <laughs> um so it's really depends again the question is it too much or too uh, not enough um it really depends on the data where they come from etc so here in our case as it is like some headlines uh, maybe it's uh, enough uh, in order to try to extract uh, mean, uh, some sense uh, from these words um again it's like unsupervised learning so we don't know what we're gonna have so uh, one of the things is Let's try. Let's start and see what happens. And after, of course, reiterate uh, on this step. Okay. So, so when I, I started working with this, I felt my reaction was it's it's a lot because it's 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 really, in a way, you know, it's it's really going to size the input layer and the output. Yeah. Layer. And I felt, man, you know, seventy-five thousand input neurons or something that's yeah, sounds weird to me <laughs> so i like to simplify things sometimes to the extreme so there, it's a good thing because there's a function in gen <laughs> called filter extremes so i relate to that and it lets me keep uh it lets me remove any word that appears in more than 50 percent on this of the headlines so if you want to filter words that are so common that they probably don't mm -hmm. help, that's a good way to do it. Now you could argue, should I use 0.5 or should I use 0.3 or fine, go and experiment. And then I just keep the 512 top words. So that's a brutal word selection because I'm literally not even keeping 1% of those words. And, uh, and let's see how we do with this, right? Let's see how we do with this. So, of course, once we've done that, we only have 512 words, okay? <laughs> Which we save to a text file. We can actually pass them to the uh, to the algo, right? And uh, they're gonna help us uh, visualize what the topics are, okay? And uh, and okay, so then we we encode, we use the dictionary to build that bag of words thing. Okay, so mm -hmm. Sego, we need help here. Um, so I'm, I'm calling the code, but what is it really doing, right? What's really happening here? What's the bag of words representation? So um, again, uh, your uh, algorithm won't be won't read the uh, headlines uh, as we do human, and uh -huh. uh, in, you need to have like a kind of format uh, in order to be uh, used uh, by the algorithm. And this is where um, the uh, back of words uh, help you. It's like really the representation of um, the word and the frequency uh, in order to be uh, ingested better uh, by the algorithm. Okay, so for example, let's see here. Okay, so we yeah. see, yeah, we see, uh, you know, we have words. Right, so each word has a, is given a certain identifier, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, from uh, zero to vocabulary size minus one, I suppose, mm -hmm. and then we simply count how many times each word appears in in a given in a given headline, and so we end up with this, 
right? We end up with this. Uh, so let's look at the at the last one, for example. So the last one says, you know, word nine appears once, word ten appears once, word eleven appears once, word twelve appears once, uh, once etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So it's just you know mapping uh, actual words to IDs and frequency counts. Okay, that's exactly. what the bag of words be. Okay. And it's and a of course, simplification the, of um, it's simplification, yeah. Way. And uh, it's called a bag of words because the, the order doesn't mean anything. And there's no there's no sense of order, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's just okay. We have word, you know, these words these many times, but order doesn't doesn't matter anymore. Okay. So we do this for one million. Uh, we do this for one million headlines. And then we're pretty much done with data prep, so we need to save this to uh, to uh, um, um, S3 or upload it to S3, our storage service, and we'll be ready to train. So, of course, we could save a CSV file, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So we would have uh, 512 columns, mostly with zeros, <laughs> because as we can see, there are just a few words per. Uh, uh, per headline, and we would have 1 million lines. So we would have a 1 million by 512 matrix, so to speak, uh, <laughs> which would be full of zeros. And we don't like that, even if it's not a huge data set. But imagine if we uh -oh. had kept, let's say, 10,000 or 20,000 words. It's just, we're just, you know, reading and writing and training on zeros, right? So that's mm -hmm. that's silly. It's a waste of network and storage and compute and everything. So we use a sparse matrix object. Uh, there's one in uh, in uh, SciPy that we can use. It's called Little Matrix, and it's basically a matrix object. It's it's exactly like a NumPy array, except mm -hmm. it's a very optimal uh, mm -hmm. format that doesn't actually store zeros. It just stores whatever non-zero data is in here. So mm -hmm. we create one, and then we just basically, uh, for each headline, which represents a row in the matrix, we just set the actual word frequency for the actual word ID, okay? So we're just filling in the matrix, okay? Um, and then we write it, uh, we write it to, uh, to a buffer, mm -hmm. okay? Using this super cool uh, SageMaker utility function, it's gonna save your life. Write sparse matrix to sparse tensor, Okay, just pass your buffer and, and, and your matrix and you're good. And then we can upload this directly in from memory to S3. So it's a cool way to do that. You don't have to save files, right? Okay, so now we have done this. Okay, so we built everything. It took a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And we have our protobuf encoded sparse matrix well that's a mouthful <laughs> in s3 and we have the vocabulary file okay all right so now now everything's easy right we've done the hard work <laughs> because now we train and that's the simple thing so we've seen this many times so uh, we retrieve the name of the sage make of the ntm container <laughs> or um, uh, for the region we're running in okay i'm using the eu west one region here just like we've done four mm -hmm. times already, we create an estimator, pass the container, pass uh, permissions in the form of an IAM role. We pass a GPU, we select a GPU instance for this because it's deep learning, so GPUs should work pretty fast. Mm -hmm. We set parameters, okay, so 10 topics, right? Look, we'll, we'll get to why 10, yes. I know that's going to be a question. Uh, so lengths of the dictionary, uh, the ADAM optimizer, the batch size, 100 epochs, because I had no idea how long to train for, and patience of 10. Okay, so exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. So let's let's spend maybe a few seconds on this. How, you know, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a chicken and egg thing, okay? We're trying to build <laughs> topics, but we don't know how many there are. So, what, why 10? Why does 10 sound like a reasonable choice? What's your, uh, what's your advice here? 
So my advice is when you do uh, topic modeling, you need to uh, understand the framework uh, from uh, in which the documents uh, are part of. And in the case of um, news uh, headlines, um, maybe go to a website, uh, a news website, and you will let's see how it is. Let's go to the ABC website. <laughs> let's go to the ABC website, for instance. Just, uh, and you can see that uh, most of the time, um, mm. here in the case of the uh, a, a news, uh, you've got different types of topics, uh, mm. politics, world, business, analysis, etc. Okay. So here One, two, in this three, case, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nine. all right. So yeah, yeah, and then the other stuff we're tired of. So <laughs> let's not mention <laughs> that. Um, so yeah, so. I, I, any any newspaper you website you go to or, or media website you go to, you're going to see I guess eight to ten top categories, mm -hmm. right? So exactly. Sounds reasonable. If if you were working with uh, enterprise data, you could you could use the same intuition again. Say okay, what's exactly. probably what's probably in there, right? So exactly. if I have customer emails and you know I have I don't know I'm selling five different products then maybe maybe there are five topics maybe five to ten because they're talking about different things but the ballpark estimate should be easy to find right okay yeah so ten it is and then we train okay and we pass the channels so the training data and this auxiliary channel which is just the vocabulary file okay mm -hmm. it's not called vocabulary for whatever reason it's called auxiliary that's fine but that's really the the text file with the vocabulary all the words and then we know what's going to happen because we've seen it so many times we fire up manage infrastructure we download the data set we pull the ntm container and we get everything going okay and we see yeah, so we see the vocabulary tab file is here. Mm -hmm. um, we see those Glove embeddings that are being downloaded as well. And that's going to be used mm -hmm. to the to compute the um, this uh, WETC similarity see? thing. We have one GPU, which is reassuring, and then we see the epochs. Okay, and we see the epochs going by, and we see the actual uh, uh, training metrics. So the, the reconstruction loss, you know, how different is the decoded uh, uh, value compared to the input value and that crazy KLD thing that, you know, I don't want to hear about ever in my life. I can't even <laughs> pronounce it. Uh, it's a crazy, it's a crazy metric. Do, do you want to go and try? No, 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 it's like the cool <laughs> okay. no, the, the, okay. the training objective of this uh, NTM is to minimize the uh, reconstruction error yes. and the uh, cool bar uh, labor divergence. And after, uh, oh, yeah. you, you so have to the... say it, okay. Right. Yeah, <laughs> KLD, KLD, <laughs> KLD. You're the expert, you're allowed to use those words. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so here we go, and it trains for a while. All right, let's go to the go to the bottom here. Uh, okay, epoch 29. All right. Oh, and it says bad epoch. Loss has not improved enough. I love this. You know, it's not improved enough. It's not good. Uh, bad count <laughs> nine. So yeah, that's uh, we're getting dangerously close to our patient setting. Bad count ten. Okay, so now we're out of patience officially. <laughs> and and then yeah, and then the next one doesn't improve either. Okay, bad epochs exceed exceeded patience, and we stop early. Okay, so That's see, cool. uh, you can you could set two hundred epochs, but SageMaker and the algo here they have your back. And uh, if you say stop, if 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 nothing has improved in ten epochs, then you're good, and the job stops. So you don't you stop paying for this, and so we train for how much is that? About eight nine minutes. Right, which mm. which is not bad. Okay, and no, I didn't use spot instances, and they would save they would save you a lot. So before we go into predicting, we see this super interesting stuff here. Okay, so best epoch was epoch twenty four, topics from epoch final. Okay, ten topics, and then we see WETC point thirty nine, TU point eighty two. So let's look at TU first. So TU is topic unicity, right? Mm -mm. So that tells us 
um, how unique the 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 word groups that we used mm -hmm. for topics are mm -mm. in overall in in the documentation. So my the my simple way of saying it is, are these the meaningful words, right? Are these meaningful exactly. words, rich context, rich words that help us understand where those are? Point eighty two, I think, is pretty good. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. And again, the value is again between zero and one, and the higher the score, the more unique uh, the topic is for the TU. So uh, zero point eight two, uh, it's good. Is that you've got a good okay, and topic? We see individual, we see individual uh, topic uh, unicities, right? We go all the way to 0.94, which is very strong, and then we see the double <laughs> ETC, which tells us how uh, how related, how closely related these words are using the globe embeddings, etc. So mm, 0.39 exactly. is kind of is, mm. is is the average value, and exactly. uh, yeah. We we have 0. 0.55, so it's like it's okay. It's not great. It's okay, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some meaning in there. Okay, so we have 10 topics, so we're not going to look at all 10. Uh, you you can uh, you can reproduce this, but okay, let's try and figure out maybe okay topic this one here, right? Oops, can't see anything. So the words are for this topic are market share, profit, dollar rise, interest business price etc so to me that looks like a finance topic right mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, yeah uh the the next one is not so obvious uh this one is clearly sports right world league mm -mm. match final victory etc uh, etc et um this one is certainly crime you know stabbing charge fatal man guilty jail etc um and and we can see you know the ones that are really i guess easy to figure out are the ones with a very high topic unicity and a pretty mm -hmm. high uh similarity score so for example this one you know which is quite low i think it's the lowest mm -hmm. of the bunch 0.73 speaks closer gold coast light cancer center help pacific fountain <laughs> what is this about i i can't you know I, it's unknown to me this is pretty pretty unclear what this topic is okay so just going through those 10 topics okay we kind of agreed with sego that these are what the topics are right justice finance local news sports maybe politics two unknown topics crime disasters um international all right so you can run your own and and see what it looks like so then we deploy to a real time endpoint and then of course we're going to predict some samples using the same processing mm -hmm. you know of words etc cetera, etc cetera. so here are some examples here of course you can read some examples from the from the actual data set but uh, i actually copied and and some some real life headlines from the uh, from the uh, Aust uh, ABC Australian website. And so let's give it a try. So the first one is major tariffs expected to end Australian barley trade to China. Okay. And so <laughs> when we predict this, right? So we can see all those numbers, which are the scores per topic. But if we try and print that nicely, it comes out as, you know, finance 35%, international 22%, right? All okay. those topics add to one, right? We we didn't mention that, which which looks okay. Now the next one is U.S. woman wanted over fatal crash, asks for release after coronavirus halts extradition. Okay, if we score this one, then it's crime forty percent, international ten percent, which isn't too bad, right? Because it's actually mm -hmm. crime, and it's international because there's a there's a, a U.S. person in there. Okay, the third one, 50 trains out of service as fault forces Adelaide passengers to pack like sardines. Adelaide is a town in Australia. That's a very funny, uh, that's a very funny headline. Maybe not if you were stuck on the train, but uh, we can certainly relate to these problems in Paris. So this one comes out as crime, unknown, unknown and sports. sports. So, so this is not a really... Great prediction. Uh, you could say maybe it's criminal that people have to be packed like sardines like in a train. Sardines, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it can, it can be but like okay, this Scott. one is kind of uh, not not great. Okay, all right, all right. Let's move on. So Germany's Bundesliga. Uh, it's the football league in Germany, as uh, 
you may know or not, plans its return from lockdown as Football World watches. So this is very obvious. And yes, it is about sports, 30%, right? And the other scores are very low. So you could see, okay, you could decide this is sports. And the last one, RFS volunteer in custody for allegedly lighting fires. Doesn't sound like a great ID. <laughs> And this scores higher on <laughs> highest on disasters, right? So there you go. Even with our very short headlines, with just a few words, and you know, not a lot of tweaking, NTM is pretty good about mm -hmm. figuring out topics and helping us um, uh, organize those documents, right? So. I think it's uh, you know it's pretty satisfactory model to me at least right. <laughs> All right, I'm checking the clock here and it is almost time. Um, so here's the most important slide, <laughs> right? Screen capture time. <laughs> So here we are. So um, all the URLs that you need to look at, um, all the repos that you need to look at, uh, the data set URL, the research paper URL, um, mm -hmm. NLTK, GenSim. Uh, again, uh, don't forget about reInvent. It's going to be online and free this year. So there's no reason not to join us and learn a lot. And and my SageMaker book, uh, which is uh, where this example was uh, was uh, was built, right? So I'll leave this on for a few more seconds, but you can uh, review this in the online video. All the videos are available on Twitch, as I'm sure you figured out. All right, so let me stop sharing my screen. And uh, we. I, it's time to say thank you again to Segolen for um, our help in understanding all those crazy things. Don't say KLD again, right? Please don't. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> don't do that. You're scaring viewers away every time you're saying that. No, no, seriously, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I couldn't do this without you. I want to thank you uh, for watching us. I'm, I'm really hoping that you'll learn a lot, that you got your questions answered. I want to thank all my AWS colleagues who've been helping with, uh, with this Twitch episode and our moderators. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week for the final episode. It's already the last one, but you know, reinvent is coming. So, you know, we'll be we'll be back. And uh, but we have to, I guess, spend hundred percent of our time on reinvent right now. So we'll be back next week, final episode. Uh Sego, you'll be there, right? I'll need you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will and, be there. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's awesome. And we'll talk about computer vision, and uh, which is really the other huge yeah. uh, field for machine learning. And we'll specifically focus on training at scale. So get ready for really, really large scale training next week. And uh, and it's a good thing I am not paying my AWS bills because this one is a big one. All right, that's for next week. Next week. Thanks again. Have a great uh, weekend. Stay safe wherever you are. And we'll see you next Friday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.